Welcome to the neighborhood. Get ready to stroll around the virtual streets of soft determination. We have three events planned for you, a black party, a community resource fair, and the very popular All Abilities Marketplace. My name is Sydney Badeau, and I am a self-advocate. I am a host of the Self-Determination YouTube channel and a board member for the Wisconsin Board for People with Developmental Disabilities. I'm also president of the Wisconsin Youth Leadership Forum. I live out in the country and do lots of disability advocacy. In the next hour, we will celebrate and learn about our diverse communities. Members from each community will share their culture, celebrations, and traditions. Now is the time to get out your conference kit. There is a treat inside for each of the block parties we'll be attending. At our first stop, we celebrate the Latino culture. Dancing and interesting facts await us. Be sure and get out the piñata in your conference kit. Hi, welcome to Alas Block Party. Even though we're virtual, we're going to have a great party with you. We're going to explore many different Latino cultures through the use of dance. In normal times, we will be together to break a piñata. But instead, today, we send you a little piñata package. Go to your kit, get it out, and let's pretend that we're together breaking a piñata. Enjoy your candy. We are with you just in perfect timing. Today is October 18. Hispanic Heritage Month starts from September 15 to October 15. Why those dates? September 15 marks five Latino countries celebrate their independence. And in September 16, Mexico celebrates their independence. So come with us. We just end up celebrating our Hispanic Heritage Month. And we are excited to be celebrating all these cultures with you today. Hi, I'm Diana and I'm the training coordinator at ALAS. And together with Elsa, we will be sharing some Did You Know facts. Did you know? There are 22 countries throughout Latino America that makes the whole Latino America. Did you know that Hispanics are the largest racial minority in the United States that vote? Did you know? More than 20 million Latinos identify with more than one race. Did you know if U.S. Latinos would make up a country, we'd be the eighth largest economy in the world? The Latino population in the United States reached 6.2 million in the census of 2020, which is the 23% increase from the census in 2010. We are growing and we are becoming the largest minority in this country. Did you know there are over 20 murals on the Milwaukee South Side created by Latino artists? And did you know Latinos are the youngest ethnic group in America? with average age of 29. So we're really young, we love to dance, and we love to party. And did you know that Hispanics account for more than half of the U.S. population growth? And also, did you know that 39.1 million Latinos say they speak Spanish at home? We are keeping our culture. We are speaking our language. And now Elsa and I will show you four typical dances from four Latino countries. First is Honduras. Honduras is very well known for the dance called Punta. And now let's take a trip to Cuba where their typical dance is Salsa. And now Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic is very well known for Merengue. Let's go to Brazil and see their typical dance, which is Samba. Ahora les quiero mostrar algunos artefactos que son parte de mi cultura. And now I would like to share some artifacts that are part of my culture. Esta es una cazuela de barro que se utiliza para cocinar diferentes comidas mexicanas. This is a ceramic pan, which is used to cook many Mexican dishes. 
Este es un molcajete que se utiliza para hacer todo tipo de salsas. This is a mortal and pesto which is used to make many different salsas. Este es un metate que se utiliza para preparar la masa para hacer las tortillas. This is a metate which is used to make a fresh tortillas. Esta es una olla de barro que se usa para, especialmente para cocer los frijoles y cualquier otra cosa que tenga caldos. This is a ceramic pot which is used to make beans and all kinds of different Mexican cuisine. Y esta es una pequeña cazuela que se utiliza para hacer moles uh, y los hay en diferentes tamaños. And this is a small pot that is used to make mole. Esta es la típica cubeta que se utiliza para diferentes quehaceres de la casa. This is a metal bucket which is used to do a lot of different household chores. We want to thank you all for being here with us today to let us get, have the opportunity to share a little bit of our Latino cultures. Next year we hope to be in person to make a piñata and take home with you and make sure you bring dancing shoes so that we can dance together all of the dances that you were able to learn today. Hasta pronto, hasta el año que viene, nos Bye. vemos en vivo. Bye, adios. Bye. Viva la cultura latina. Viva la cultura latina. Viva. Next, we celebrate Black culture. Mardi Gras style. Enjoy your own personal mask to decorate in your conference kit. I'm Dolores Salas. I am the founder and director of Parent University. Today here at Parent University, we are having a block party. In New Orleans, they usually have a Mardi Gras, but due to the pandemic, they couldn't do that, so they had a Yardi Gras where no parades was done, but everybody decorated outside their homes, inside their homes, where you could pass by the yards, and they called it a Yardi Gras. Here in Milwaukee, we're not outside, so it's not a Yardi Gras, it's a party Gras. <laughs> where we're gonna get together, and we're gonna wear our masks, and enjoy ourselves, just have a great time, because it's been so long since we could come together. Well, of course, when you think Mardi Gras, they wear masks. And all this year and last year, we had to wear a mask over our nose and our mouth. And we didn't like it, but we did it. But anyway, to make our day fun, we're gonna do masks on our eyes. We're gonna mask up. And in your kits for this conference, you have a mask that you can make and remake the way you want it to your liking. So watch in your kit and get your mask and decorate it. Welcome back. Here I'm introducing Donnie Whitaker to you. She is our mask maker. She's made these beautiful masks for us to wear today. And I'm gonna let her like explain how she makes the mask. Cause she does such a beautiful job. She can tell you better than I can. So we are gonna start off with a plain mask. And I have some uh, feather and I just put them on with this glue here, right here. Yeah. We'll put a little of that on and get our masks all pretty and so we can have them ready for the monograph. And we put them on and I just like to do a little ass in, but yeah, just follow the little line. Just follow the line. Yeah, that's what we do. Make some uh, eyes, put them on here. And I like doing it cause my grandbaby, he loved to get it. And Granny, I want to make one. I want to make one, so. And this is the eye that we're gonna put on here. Yes, and put it down, that one down there. We got this all. Yep. Then we all done. Use one of these that I'll have already dry and let you see how it look. Okay, cause this one is 
all dry. And this one I just made. It's right here. Oh, when the saints come marching in. Oh, when the saints come marching in. I want to be in that number. When the saints come marching in. Oh, in the same, go oh, in the same, go oh, marching me. I wanna be in that number. When the same, go marching me. Oh, in the same, go marching me. Hallelujah. We as black Americans, we celebrate Mardi Gras, but there is a group called the Zulus. That's how the black people started celebrating Mardi Gras. So we're dressed today like we are African and celebrating the nice clothes because you know black women are African women are queens and the guys are kings. So we're dressed as king and queens today because I thought it would be just fun growing strong together, being everybody being a king or a queen. In the Zulu tradition, the men wear grass skirts and tuxedo jackets, and they also paint their face black. And they have afros and different wigs and head wraps on. We're not doing that today like the guys, but as I'm dressed, it would be like the queen is dressed in the Zulu tribe. And you'll see more people with African attire on. This is Rolanda. She has on a black and white pencil cut dress. And she's accenting it with the beads from the Mardi Gras. Maybelline is wearing a multicolored dashiki for us today with her fitted jeans and sandals and a black head wrap to accent her outfit. This is Donis. She's here in a very colorful caftan. And she has that nice Afro-y looking hair to accent her African look with her matching beads from our Mardi Gras. This is Charles. He's the king of the crop today from our Zulu look. He's wearing a black walking suit and he's also ready for the Zulu brunch. That necklace, that's like the king necklace for the Zulu tribe. This is Faye. This is our, one of our queens. <laughs> She's leopardy in her leopardy African type look with her black hat on. We call it a turban. And she's accented it with her black scarf around her neck. And she also is wearing her Mardi Gras beads. For our lunch today, we're gonna do a traditional soul food meal, which will include some collard greens with smoked turkey, Sweet potatoes, what they call them, candy yams, macaroni and cheese, cornbread dressing, and then we have gravy to accent our dressing, and we have okra here to go with our greens. As we go over to the other table, over here we have fried chicken and baked chicken. And our breads will be cornbread and dinner rolls. Our desserts are sweet potato pie and a butter pound cake. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow. I'm going to thank you for this day, thanking you for this food. Father, you pray that you bless this pant anniversary and bless this dinner. Play and serve and watch over and keep us as we go forward throughout this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Now that we had all our fun today, it's now time to eat some soul food and soothe our souls. And be Thanks great for coming. Fun. You may be surprised to learn that Milwaukee has a rich and proud Russian community. Get out the Russian candy from your conference kit and sit down to a traditional Russian tea ceremony.
Hello, my name is Yefim, and I would like to tell you a little bit about Russian tea ceremony. Russia is famous for tea. Russia is the country where tea drinking formed into individual tradition. History of the Russian tea drinking ceremony began in 1638 when Russian Tsar Mikhail Fedorovich received a special diplomatic gift from Altum Khan, ruler of Mongolia. When friends visit, hosts invite them to have a cup of tea. This cup of tea is not just tea, but includes cookies, sandwiches, and other items. Each feast ends with tea drinking with candies and cakes. In Russia, tea is consumed after meals and during mid-afternoon breaks, but it's not considered appropriate to drink with a meal. Loose tea is brewed in a hot teapot that produces strong tea called zavarka. Zavarka is served into tea cups and diluted with hot water to feed a personal taste. It is an old Russian tradition to serve tea from the samovar after supper. After clearing the supper table, the samovar is put in the center and the whole family gathers around for tea. The samovar is the central symbol of the Russian tea ceremony. As combination a teapot and brewing device, it is a truly unique creation. Thank you for coming to my home and learning about this wonderful tea ceremony. Nazdarovia to your health. Wisconsin's Native American community is celebrated at our last block party. You'll want to get out the dream catcher from your conference kit for this celebration. Bonjour. I'm going to my name is Melissa Dowd. My Indian name is Thunder Woman, and I'm from the Lac de Flambeau Indian Reservation in Lac de Flambeau, Wisconsin. I'm standing outside of Great Lakes Inner Tribal Council, and I'll be discussing the various Indian tribes in Wisconsin and how you can get to know more about them in your community. One of the things we'd like to talk about is language. The languages are different for all of the tribes in Wisconsin. Today I'm gonna to be sharing three words in the Ojibwe language from Lac de Flambeau. The first word is hello. We say boujou. If you'd like to say it, say boujou, boujou. The next word is thank you. We say miigwech, miigwech. In Ojibwe, there is no word for goodbye. We say, see you later. And to say that is Gikawabamin. Gikawabamin. Like I mentioned, I am a member of the Lac de Flambeau Band of Lake Superior Chippewa Indians. The Lac de Flambeau tribe is one of six Chippewa or Ojibwe tribes in Wisconsin. These tribal communities are located in the northern part of Wisconsin. St. Croix, La Couture, Red Cliff, Bad River, Lac de Flambeau, where I am from, and Sakagan, Mo Lake. There are eight other tribes or nations in Wisconsin. Forest County, Potawatomi are located in the northeastern part of the state. On the east side of the state is the Menominee Nation. Very close to their community is the Stockbridge-Munsee tribal community. 
They are made of the Mohican and Muncie people. Farther southeast is the Oneida Nation, located in and around Green Bay. Throughout the mid and southwestern side of Wisconsin is the Ho-Chunk Nation. They don't have one community, but several. I also want to recognize the Brothertown Indian Nation. Although not federally recognized, they are part of tribal communities. There are many tribal members that don't live within their tribal communities though. Each tribal community is unique with their own governmental structures and systems. Traditions and customs are unique as well. Although we have a lot of similarities, there are also some differences. One thing that all tribal communities in Wisconsin share are the social gatherings that each community will hold. These are called powwows. A powwow is a community gathering where drummers drum and sing and dancers put on their regalia and dance. Do not ever call regalia a costume. That can be insulting. There are vendors selling goods. They also sell crafts. There are food vendors selling fry bread and Indian tacos, which are favorites to many native people. Regalia is traditional clothing worn at powwows. If you are interested in learning more about a tribal community in your area, I encourage you to go to a powwow. They are free and open to the public. They happen on many weekends throughout the summer. Come and enjoy good food, good music, and all around good fun. There are many styles of dance at a powwow. The most common you'll see are men's traditional, where they wear the feathers or bustles upon their back. There is also woodland where there are no feathers. And there's also women's traditional. The other kind are grass dancers. This is where you'll see yarn or strands of ribbon from the male dancers. The next style is a jingle dress. The jingle dress consists of many metal shiny cones. The other style is fancy dance. This is where you'll see bright, beautiful colors upon the backs of the men. There's also a fancy shawl dance for the women, which is similar to the males. They're bright colored and they flutter around like a butterfly. Lac de Flambeau is a beautiful area with a rich history. In the summertime on Tuesdays, we have powwows where you have an opportunity to come and enjoy our beautiful culture. The Lac de Flambeau Reservation offers an abundance of resources. There are many trees, lakes, and spots for camping. If you're ever in the area, please come by and visit us, and we'd be happy to share our beautiful culture with you. Miigwech. Thanks for taking along, and thanks to all the folks who shared their culture with us. Our next event is a community resource fair. It's scheduled for 3 p.m. See you then.